All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. You have joined the Regimen MD webinar, our very first webinar, with the esteemed Dr. Ruth Tadaldi. She is here today talking about how your patient's skincare is your business. Um, she is going to teach you all of her tips and tricks today for how she has built an amazing practice dispensing skincare out of her dermatology practice in Massachusetts. So I will just give a couple minutes to see, I see a lot of you are joining right now. I'll just give you a little bit of time to get situated. While you are getting situated on the bottom of your screen, there's two options. There is a chat function if you have any questions or wanna chat, but if you have a question for Dr. Tadaldi, we ask that you put it in the one that says QA, question and answer, and that one will be great. We will actually try and get to questions as they come in. So feel free to start entering questions now if you already know what your questions are or as we get going. So I still see a couple people joining. You have joined our webinar with Dr. Ruth Tadaldi on your patient's skincare is your business. So without any further ado, I am extremely excited to introduce Dr. Tadaldi. She has a very beautiful, amazing educational presentation ready for you today. Um, it should take about an hour, leaving room for lots of questions and answers and interaction throughout the webinar. So Dr. Tadaldi, welcome. Thank you, Risa, and hello to everyone. Even though I can't see you, I like it much better when I can see everyone. Um, I want to thank everyone who is here because I know how important it is to talk about this in a very open format and to realize that I'm here to help you. I took years and years and years to figure this out and I, I'm still figuring it out, but I think I've arrived at a place where it's really exciting for me to share with you um, everything I've learned. To that point, I want to just have a really brief shout out to two women in my life um, who have really made this possible. Um, the first is Haley Jacobson, who really many moons ago came to my office and the two of us started an amazing skincare practice and I couldn't have done it without her. And the second is my sister, Patty Ferris, who basically has uh, exemplified for me the whole notion of trust. That theme of trust is going to keep going uh, throughout this presentation because that's really what I'm going to try to embed in you in terms of your relationship with your um, patient. So I um, will say one quick thing about the title of this presentation. I know that a lot of you had a email that came out at first was which was about, about making a lot of money doing this. I think it's interesting to say to you that after a while I felt, well, that's really not what this is all about. This is really about being good at your business, which is taking care of people's skin. And so I like to always give the analogy that if I went to my cardiologist and I had a problem with my blood pressure and he didn't talk to me about diet and exercise, I would not be getting the proper and complete care. It's the same thing with skincare. This is who I am. I am a dermatologist as well as a pediatrician. You can see I'm standing in front of a million bottles of cream because I do not sell just one brand. I do not educate about one brand. I talk about everything. I read up on everything. I, it's, too, it's definitely much too deep a field for me to know everything, but the truth of the matter is I always want to know everything. I also um, am involved with a program called The GIST. I hope you will join us on uh, thegistshow.com and like us on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Instagram. And this is one little clip and tells you just a little bit about me. important to realize that the increased pigmentation has to come from somewhere. It's not coming from you sitting in a dark room. So your exposure to sunlight is triggering the added presence and the accumulation of pigment. So if you can block that for starters, you're off to a good start. And so what's important for you to realize here is that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I played that twice. I didn't mean to. Uh... It's important to realize that the increase 
if you can see how good I am technically, right? has to come from somewhere. It's not coming from you sitting in a dark room. So you're exposed to sunlight is triggering the Risa, I'm gonna have to ask you to get me out of this. There I go. Okay. Perfect. And now I'm gonna ask you to tell me a little bit about you. I, I've told you something about me and I'm gonna ask you a little poll question, it, which really will just give me some information about directing my conversation. Yeah, Every, so, everyone, like, so everyone should have a poll that's up on their screen right now that you can see. And Dr. Tadaldi, just help her know who she's talking to today. So are you a MD? If so, a dermatologist, a plastic surgeon or other? Are you a nurse or physician assistant, an esthetician or a practice owner, offer staff? And if you've tuned in on your phone, you might not be able to see this. So if you wanna chat it over, that's fine. If not, as many of you answer will be helpful. So while you're answering that question, I thought I would basically tell you that in the field today, um, it really is important to, to understand that the patient is coming in to see you for something. And you are definitely the person giving most of the information. But it truly helps to have everyone around you, office staff, estheticians, nursing, um, as well as the other physicians in your office understand what it is you're trying to accomplish. And so we can see that half of you are dermatologists, there are no plastic surgeons or other physicians, and then we have a, a mixture of office staff, uh, estheticians, and um, nursing and uh, PA. So it's all the right people, it's all something that really helps me in terms of um, discussing with you what needs to go on. Um, this is why I sell skincare. I realized years ago that I am the skin doctor. It's pretty simple. I truly believe that what, how my patient improves is dependent on what they learn from me. It's not about just coming in, having a shot, having a laser treatment, but it's really about protecting that investment. So performing a procedure without extending to home care is truly going to limit exactly what your patient gets from that visit. I like to be successful. I have absolutely no problem saying that. And I also know that my patients are buying their skincare immediately after leaving my office if I haven't discussed it. This was a study that was done by Allergan. 80% of patients will buy a skincare product within 24 hours of having a cosmetic treatment. I was tired of seeing what they were buying. And if you haven't been to counters all over, which we obviously aren't doing now, but uh, a year ago, I would absolutely have gone in to Sephora just to hear the verbiage that my patients were um, basically listening to. So that's why I sell skincare, but this is why you're not selling skincare. I've given this lecture a million times on the podium. I definitely was part of that first group in the very beginning, the first meeting that I went to, and I was greeted with a bunch of salespeople telling me why I should be selling skincare, and I was the heckler in the back. You went to medical school. You don't want to feel like a salesperson. You don't want to alienate your patients. You don't necessarily even believe in it. Um, and that's your fault. That's because you're not studying it. You're not really taking the time to read all the articles. There's so much um, science, true uh, science involved right now in all of the products that we can use. That's really an issue. You don't know it because you haven't been exposed to it. But the real issue, I think, is that if it's not the first thing you do in the room, and you're going to hear me say this a million times, because I now firmly believe that if, it be, if it's not first, if it's fourth or even last, that's the first thing to go. Patty and I love to laugh about the issue of it's all just too complicated and we both have this image and I had a slide of it on an old presentation but I don't have it for you tonight, of the patient coming in with a bag of their products. I like to call this the graveyard of skincare. 
And as soon as you see that as the physician, as the nurse, as the practitioner, and you go, oh my God, I'm gonna have to really spend hours here. You're sensitive to that, but you're also sensitive to teaching the patient how to spend his or her money. You better wake up from all of this because not one of these reasons is a valid reason to not educate and begin to have a role in the way your patient improves. If I could explain that to you and stress that to you right from the beginning, it's just like this lecture. If I do it right from the beginning, I think I can get through to you that it's not the second or third thing you must do, it is the first thing you must do. So let's take a look at this marketplace. Skincare is definitely perceived to be pivotal to patients. These studies have all been done and they spend a lot of time and money and energy. Patients are always trying to get the best product. They want it from you, but they'll always find ways to pay for it. We all know that. We have the patients that come in with their little envelope of dollars bills that they save from their budget. We have patients that go on credit, on care uh, credit. We have patients that run up their credit card bills. They're gonna find a way to do it because it's important. Paying for professional skincare results is perceived to be worth it. This is the perception that impacts their appearance. They feel better, more confident. And for the most part, their lack of satisfaction with over-the-counter products is leading them to search for something better that truly works. So we know that 86%, not 40%, 86% of patients want their provider to recommend skincare. And so if you're not doing this, you're really not giving that patient what, they, what he or she wants. I used to look at these numbers and think about what it was I was talking to my patients about, but it was still an add-on. It was still if I had time. It was still the fact of the matter that it wasn't necessarily the first thing I was going to talk about. And I even had people come into the room that I would so-call anoint to do that work. And some of you may still do that, and it's a fine way to do it. But what you're gonna see later on in this presentation that now with COVID and I'm locked in that room and I don't want my patients moving around, it has to be the fundamental part of your visit because that's what they're going home with. So I have a question for you Wait, now. I I'm sorry, and we're gonna Perfect. put the second poll question up. Okay, so everyone, so here's your poll question. So tell me, tell Dr. Tadaldi, how much skincare you currently dispense in your practice? So do you not currently sell at all? Are you doing less than 100,000 a year? This is anonymous too, so no, don't be afraid to tell the truth. Um, 100 to 250, 250 to 500, or more than 500 a year. And so I'll say as you're filling this out, it's not about the money right here at all. It's about the fact that this gives me a clue about whether or not you're having the conversation. And so for me to see someone go in and have Botox to get rid of wrinkles and not be told, at least about how often they have to wear sunscreen or what's in their sunscreen, at least use an antioxidant and retinol. I just am absolutely blown over that that conversation doesn't occur. So let's look at the answers to this. Less than 100,000 is 37%. 100 to 250 uh, is, the, is 21%. And the, 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 those of you that are doing a little bit more are selling um, up, up to 500. And then you have 21%, which is a nice number. It's a really nice number because take a look at what the national numbers are. The national numbers are, and these are a little bit old, I will tell you that, but the bottom line is that um, most people are not doing what 21% of you are doing. I think the fact that this is old if we uh, had a, one that was a little bit more relevant, you would see that probably closer to 20%, but certainly not 20%. I think the fact that you're here already self-selects for a population that is very interested. I don't want you to feel bad if you're in the other groups. I just want you to realize that your job can become much more interesting, a lot more fun. And basically when you leave the room, you will feel that you have given the patient the full 360 of what he or she is looking for. <clears throat> so we know this, I said this before, and I think I'm gonna say it again, because I want you to walk out of this 
meeting also feeling this, 80% of consumers who visit a physician or a med spa will purchase one skincare product within 24 hours of their visit. If you haven't gone into Sephora, if you haven't gone to the counter at Bloomingdale's, if you haven't witnessed what patients are hearing, and I'll call out Haley Jacobson on this because I actually sent her undercover to make that video, which she did, that I presented at an ASDS meeting, and it was mind blowing what our patients are hearing. Why would they even listen? So I often say that I basically educate my patients so they can walk into a salon or a store, a storefront and skip through all of that because who's giving them their advice? Their doctor. This is the business that we're in. This is the reality of what is happening. Take a look at that first pie, that green pie with the purple little sliver. I say that because commercial skincare is a $12.7 billion business. And look at the pie, look at that slice that is that occupies professional skincare. Those other people are basically wasting a lot of money. They are the feel good people. They are the skincare graveyard. It horrifies me. And so when you look at this, and I remember when I gave my first lecture for Allergan at a summit, it must have been eight or nine years ago, and that number was not quite yet $1 billion, and we were all looking at it thinking, where is this number going to go? So 2019 did show the largest growth in professional skincare. So that's why your poll right here is at 23% or wherever it was, much higher than that 3% of outliers. And the market is going to continue to grow. I will now give you the second take home point, which is this is the glue that holds your patient to you. Every meeting I go to, every lecture I hear about how you run your business is the fear that a lot of us have about patients price shopping, patients are not gonna hold on to their, uh, doctors are not gonna hold on to their patients for the procedures that they wanna do. Well, the bottom line is, I think this is better than any social media pod podium. I think it is better than anything you can do in terms of sales, lowering your prices, all of the things that you may think about but don't wanna do, because what really makes a difference is that you start the conversation. So that's two points that I want you to please walk out of this lecture with. And the first is that you have to start the conversation first. You're gonna hear that from me until you throw up. I hope you don't. But the other thing that I want to impress upon you is that it is the glue that will hold your patient to you. <clears throat> Professional skincare is a growing market. It's going to keep growing even during COVID. If, I don't know if you've been involved in any of the manufacturer uh, webinars, but the one, one field that is actively growing for all of them, for MERS with Neocutis, with Allergan, with Skin Medica, with a, a, a lot of these manufacturers who also do, I'm talking about the ones that also do, do injectables, is that their skincare business is doing well. This is an opportunity to grow something in your practice, to really increase patient loyalty. And I skipped over the sales part of it because I too don't relate to myself as a salesperson. I'm an educator, I am a physician. I'm trying to do the most complete job I can do every single day. I'm really tired, I don't even care anymore that much. I have a little bit of me that wants to defend myself when people say you're selling something, but it's not that much, I'm educating. What uh, Ellen Marmer, who's a great friend of mine, and I think she's on this webinar, we had this conversation the other night and I loved it and she basically said, you know, you think about, you don't like the word selling, but what you're selling is your expertise. And that's so true. You're selling your education. You're selling what you've trained and learned. Patients trust you. They want it from you. These studies have been shown. A recommendation can enhance the experience. The millennials are all about the patient experience. And if you really want to give a non-pro grade user the opportunity to show real improvement, you're gonna to try to at least give them some of the little bits of information, just about mineral versus chemical sunscreens, things that make a huge difference, how often they should put their sunscreen on, what are they actually putting on, what does a retinol do, how are antioxidants basically de 
decreasing oxidative stress. I think you would be so surprised if you added a touch of science to your um, skincare regimen education because that's where patients really stick to you. Well, all that education and all that talk can make you quite tired. And if you want your patients to stick with you, you've got to figure out a way to increase and support that stick factor. So what are the challenges? The biggest challenge is that, as I said before, you're not necessarily that comfortable because you're a doctor, you're a bit embarrassed. You need to absolutely, as I say to my patients, put your helmet on. You know what? You should see the way I look when I go to the beach. It's not pretty. And so the failure to educate your patient about how to protect themselves, what kind of a jumpsuit they need to wear in the water, how their hat cannot be a little baseball cap or they're gonna have a lot of melasma and hyperpigmentation, the same thing has, you have to apply to yourself. Put your helmet on and realize that if you're not gonna do this, you're not really fulfilling your job as a dermatologist. That's, this is the slide that we show over and over and over. And Patty and I talk about this slide over and over again because why? You talk till you're sick in the face, you express and you finally sell a product and the patient believes you and they buy CE Ferulic. And of those 100 products, of those 100 patients that buy a product, look what happens. 30% don't, only 30% come back to you for the second and only 12% come back to you for the third. So this was really the impetus for us to develop our business, which is Regimen, but I'm gonna get into that later. The bottom line is it's also the real reason why when something has to go, you basically let the skincare education go. You're not uh, doing it, you're not letting it go because you don't believe it necessarily, you're letting it go because it's frustrating. Why do these 80% drop off? And the real interesting thing to us, which we found out years ago, is that you think it's they're going shopping online because they're shopping price. Guess what? It's just too inconvenient to go back to your doctor's office, or they don't necessarily remember. How many times does it take you to learn something? As Risa can tell you, it takes me quite a number of times to operate my computer before I've learned it. That's why I had that little video on a few times. Or you get distracted. It doesn't be, it's just like a diet. You kind of have that first, you know, hot fudge Sunday, and then you're saying, oh, well, I just blew it. I'm not going to do it anymore. There's so many reasons that are psychological and not price. You have to get into your patient's head a little bit more. And where do they go? They go where it's easy. They go where they push the buttons and they get that product, but then they get distracted online, as all of us have done during COVID. I can't tell you how many masks I bought. And so you have to figure out what is this solution? How are you going to provide this education, which is time consuming? And then how are you gonna hold on to that patient for their skincare? I told you already, it is a stick factor, but if you don't allow that stick factor to hold, and that takes a few times of using the product, obviously, except for some of the newer ones, which I'm pretty impressed with. Uh, one of those is TNS Plus, which I just flabbergasted by how, how quickly it works but you have to figure out a way that you can do this. And so you're gonna hear this over and over and I hope you walk away with this. I've already said it 17 times. The key to every visit is going to be for every patient, you have to start at the beginning. I think Haley's not listening to this call and she will be the first one to tell you that since she hasn't been in my office because she's working with Regimen, I, didn't, I used to do it at the end. And so why have my sales gone through the roof? Because I do it at the beginning, when I have some energy, when I'm welcoming the patient, when I basically want them to know that I do care about this. It has to be the appetizer, it has to start. It's just like doing a skin check if you don't do it the same way every time and you don't start with a scalp. How many times did patients come in with things in their scalp that the dermatologist never ever saw before, but their new dermatologist, Ruth Tadaldi, saw it because I started with their scalp. It's the same thing with skincare. You have to start at the beginning the same way. So I love to say, if you're not setting the table, you're going, you're gonna eat at the counter. And it's really true. You have to sit down for your meal 
once the table is set and you can't just drop it in afterwards. It has to be about the experience. You have to figure out how to start the conversation, to be the captain of your ship. What are the right questions to ask? I can promise you this. If you're not asking the questions because you're afraid, oh, I'm gonna get into that conversation, you have to learn how to limit the conversation. And the biggest way to do it for me is to basically say, let me ask you a little bit about your skincare. What do you use? And when they say almost 90% of the time, if they're not my, if they're not a returning patient, well, I use a uh, scrub and then I use a toner and then I use a serum. And I go, okay, we're gonna stop this conversation right now. I don't even wanna know what's in your scrub. I don't wanna know what's in your serum. Do you know what a serum is? I just kind of laugh and hit my head against the wall. I basically say, I'm talking about active ingredients. Uh, this is where I start to construct the story a little bit, but also give them a little bit of fear. You're wasting your money on those products. And that right there is the golden ratio. You have to tell a story. You have to tell a story. I have four kids. I told stories every night till I just wanted to fall asleep uh, at the very beginning, but obviously I didn't. I wanted them to all be good readers. I wanted them to like to read. I wanted them to grow intellectually. You have to do the same thing in your office. So you basically have to come up with some things that make a difference. Well, guess what? If you're not using a retinol, you're really not replenishing and stimulating your cells. You're not increasing cell turnover. And you start to tell them a few things. The first time is the longest, and that's why the first Patient visit for me is longer than any other visit because I'm gonna tell a little bit of a story. I'm gonna to explain to them about antioxidants and why your sunscreen protects you from all the ultraviolet. But guess what? Lots of things are damaging your DNA that are not protected against with sunscreen. And so that's where your antioxidant comes in. And your antioxidant is the cleanup crew that, the, that your sunscreen did not protect you against. And then I start to talk about growth factors a little bit, never on the first visit. I always give the patient two or three things on the first visit. And then I say to them, you will become a junkie. It's just like Botox. You think you're gonna have it once and decide, guess what? Once you have it once, you're in. Once you use an active and your skin starts to improve, you're in. So walk the walk. If you don't love it, then you've got to find someone in your office that does love it. But I think most of us do love it. Try things out. Let your, let your partner, let your spouse, let your boyfriend, your girlfriend, let them try it if you don't want to try it. And also let your office staff try things. It's so important for your staff to be excited about what you are doing. Test out different brands, send emails to me and to Patty. We know so much about so many products. Not all of them, they're, too, they're coming much too quickly for all of us, but we know a lot. But the ability for you to really speak from your heart about what your story has been. I mean, I've been using Growth Factor for 12 years. And so when I talk to patients and I say, okay, just guess how old I am. It's a lot to do with how I've protected my skin and it's a lot to do with how I've stimulated my skin. You have to educate your staff, you have to educate your patient, you have to educate everybody, but guess what? That's what the good person in life does. And so you wanna talk about certain ingredients, you wanna talk about a little piece of the science. Every single one of my patients knows I'm gonna talk about the DNA helix, every one of them. And I remind them, yes, you do remember what that helix looked like. And you do remember that purines and pyrimidines. Can you name one of the purines or pyrimidines? We have fun. We get into the whole conversation. And then I start to talk about how do you apply it? My patients know that I'm not rubbing it in my hands and treating the palms of my hands. And I show them how I put it on the back of my hand. And then I tap my face all over. Order of application in terms of product layering. Well, I use 10 products, so of course I'm going to talk to them a little bit about layering, but that's over time. Once you have the conversation, I urge you with new patients, don't schedule more than two a day. You will be worn out and you won't do it. So that's the limit, two new patients a day, because you have a lot of work to do. So for beautiful skincare, that daily routine has to be combined with every single skin condition and treatment. And I know Patty Ferris is gonna give a talk about the combination we call integrative um, dermatology, where you're basically seeing what happens when you combine treatments with skincare. 
And also in terms of ingredients, Diane Burson is gonna talk about six of the newer, slightly newer, but really important ingredients that we all use. So you gotta learn, you gotta start learning because you're going to absolutely want to give all this information to your patients and you're gonna feel so much more confident, I can't tell you. So you become a center for education. You're focusing on education. I don't sell anything. I know you maybe don't believe me because I make a ton of money, which I, it's not for me that I make the money for skincare. It's for my whole office. And so that's something that I, you have to structure smartly. I didn't structure it so smartly, but I have five other doctors and we all share in everything. Um, and I think that you have to realize that you want everybody to feel so competent. It's such an easy thing to feel competent about and it's directly related to your patient's improvement and how they feel about coming to see you. So scaling, selling skincare online is a, night, is a nightmare unless you do it the right way. There are many ways to do it. You can go to manufacturer sites and good luck with clicking into all the different ones. If you sell one product line, fine, go for it. I could never sell one product line because nobody makes everything that I love the most. Um, you need to, you could create your own e-commerce store. I know one uh, of my colleagues who does it well, but she has no idea how much money she spends just operating that. And then we get to Regimen MD. <clears throat> Patients now with COVID-19 are basically um, in a, we're in a position where patients are entering our offices. We don't want them to drop around to our stores if we have them. Some of you don't even have stores. Some of you have these locked cabinets, which I would urge you to get rid of tonight. Um, nobody wants to see that. And patients don't want to touch everything, and they certainly don't want to touch things that other people have touched. We don't, we don't have testers or samples uh, that are up and open anymore because we're really trying to do this the right way. It is definitely, during COVID, it is a virtual um, world, and it's safer than in office sales. It's more modern. Patients enjoy the convenience, and your patients will definitely thank you. This is a little video of uh, that I made uh, a couple weeks ago when after um, COVID and I came back into the office and I realized that I was having, I had now, I was only seeing two patients an hour and guess what? I could do it all in the room. I'm gonna show you fairly quickly what that looks like. Hi, it's Ruth Pedaldi and I'm here at Dermatology Partners. As most of you know, Patty Ferris and I started Regimen MD, Regimen Pro is the website about five years ago to teach doctors how to dispense. Regimen Pro is a system that allows the doctor to be able to dispense skincare to the patient and develop a second business, not only their, their dermatology practice, but also their skincare business. It's a simple way to have a revenue stream that goes on and on if the continuity of care is emphasized by the doctor. Now with COVID, we're all completely locked into our rooms. Our patients have to come. And it goes on and on like that. I didn't, I didn't do that, um, Risa, but I, I want to basically tell you that it's the, it's the refill part of this whole equation that can be so frustrating. You have definitely made your hard work drive them to reorder on Amazon or another place if they're not coming back into your office. You are the expert in their life. They trust you. And they prop the Bottom line is, as they improve, they're going to need their regimen and require refills every three to six months. So Dr. Staldi, before you move on, we have a question here. Okay. From Justin, um, he says, why is it better to use the back of the hands versus the palms? <laughs> of all the things to ask, that's not the one I thought you would, but <laughs> most people, if you watch them, they take a, 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 a pump or two of product and they put it into their hands. And especially guys do this. I watch my husband do it all the time. And they rub their hands together before they put it on their face. And so imagine you're probably getting about an eighth of what the product is and they're, and they're expensive. So to use the back of your hand and put it in that one or two pumps and then touch your face all over, you're going to get a lot more of it on your skin. It's as simple as that. Okay. He says guilty. Okay. Um, and let's just go on to regimen because this is definitely where my heart is. <clears throat> Now, this is where a man might spend most of his time in the home of the 21st century. 
This equipment here will allow him to carry on normal business activities without ever going to an office away from home. This console provides a summary of news relayed by satellite from all over the world. Now, to get a newspaper copy for permanent reference, I just turn this button. Regimen Pro is the evolution of skincare, designed to virtually connect doctors, skincare specialists, patients, and cosmeceutical product manufacturers. Skincare products selected by your doctor are shipped directly to you from participating product manufacturers when and where you need it. This experience provides continuous engagement with your skincare specialist. The next generation of skincare delivered. So what this um, little video was aimed at the patient, not the doctor, but it was aimed to give them the realization that they could now go online to a site like Regimen Pro. So those of you that don't know, and it was even confusing for me for a while, Regimen MD is our business. And that is something that the doctors, um, when they join, join Regimen MD. But Regimen Pro is the website, and that's where your patients will shop for product or follow their orders or initiate their orders. And so the way it works for um, most patients is their doctor initiates it. We have access to over 600 skincare products from all of the top tier brands. We even have L to MD now. Um, we sell products from most brands and we reduce that need for you to carry all that inventory. You will earn a royalty on sales and that is calculated monthly and checks are sent out to you monthly. But the most important thing you have to realize that it's not coming from someone's counter, it's not coming from someone's um, shipment facility. It's coming basically from the manufacturer. There are fewer touch points. And how it works is the patient enrolls while they're in the office, as I was showing you in that video that I shortened a little bit. And we create the regimen. The doctor creates the regimen or the nurse or whoever it is in your office that's doing it. I've urged you at this point to start doing it yourself to see what that feels like. That order is placed on regimen and paid for through regimen on the computer. And then you can select either one time or subscription. Right now we have 25 manufacturers and we have the most important issue is that all of these manufacturers, and I think we have some that aren't even on here yet, um, but we really have all of the go-to ones that most of us use. Um, and here's Patty talking a little bit with Janine about our site. <clears throat> Regimen Pro is the evolution of skincare designed to electronically connect doctors, skincare specialists, patients, and cosmeceutical product manufacturers. Skincare products selected by your doctor are shipped directly to you from participating product manufacturers when and where you need it. This experience provides a continuous engagement with your skincare specialist. The next generation of skincare delivered. So in terms of the whole aging process, it's a lot of different things. It's your genetics in terms of your people are and you know kind of how they age it's your level of sun damage i'm an ex-lifeguard i burn myself in the sun from 16 to 20 so i have that to unfortunately pay for the rest of my life it's whether or not you smoke that's really really important so if you do smoke you should absolutely quit and that's easier said than done but there are techniques that even we dermatologists can help you to employ so that you can quit a bit faster and it's your overall stress level do you exercise do you eat brightly colored fruits and vegetables Aging really comes from two things. Number one, it comes from birthdays, of course. We call that natural aging. But probably a bigger factor is environmental aging. And these are the effects that ultraviolet light, pollution, and other environmental factors have on our skin. It's very hard, of course, to delay intrinsic aging, but that environmental component is very controllable. So the use of things like sunscreens and antioxidants, and of course, sun avoidance, can really make a difference in the way your skin ages. Our skin naturally ages, but 90% of how your skin ages is under your control. This means that just doing simple things like daily sun protection and antioxidant use will make a very big difference in your skin. Regimen Pro is the next generation of skincare delivered. So the reason this slide is up there is because we have an amazing um, advisory board of physicians, well-respected dermatologists, who really care about the 
meat and potatoes of what we're doing, which is education. And we all, all believe that if we, if we basically can educate our patients, as I said before, it's about education, not selling. It's about setting the table at the beginning of the, of the appointment. What we found out and then having a system that can really support the refill part of the business, 75% um, of our patients are signing up for subscription. 50% are staying on this for up to 30 months. And so we're getting an average of four returns on a, on a, on a product, whereas the average number, as you saw before, was about 1.2. This is a very simple um, graph that will basically show you, you think you're getting 50% on all the products you're selling in your office. And so this is the gross revenue. If we sold 100 patients, uh, sold a hundred a hundred dollar product to a hundred patients. You think you're getting ten thousand dollars. That's your, your gross revenue in office. Fifty percent of that obviously is um, inventory cost. Um, and then what happens if you follow that route of thirty percent of them dropping off the first year? Then you're going to have only three thousand dollars in the in office sales, whereas the fifty percent continuity from regimen is going to is going to maintain a, at least better than the three thousand. And then by the third year, that number becomes fifteen percent. So you can see after years two and three, your in office sales, your your in office sales have dropped off completely, but the continuity sales on a, a system like regimen have really. Um, stood the test of time and you basically are now in a business. This is my practice. This is what we did in 2018. We doubt, did, and this is just, as you can imagine, I do both. So, you know, it's not required that you do everything on regimen. I have an in-office um, dis dispensary, a beautiful store, um, but a lot of my sales are on regimen. And I think what's interesting is that look at 2020 when everything else is kind of failing for a lot of us. In six months, we have already almost hit what we hit last year because of the no touch and the fact that um, patients don't want to come into the store. They want to get things delivered to them and the fact that I have more time and start up that conversation immediately the first minute that the patient comes in the room. So Regimen Pro is a new model for dispensing. It keeps your patient engaged. It supports all that time that you are spending talking about product. If you don't believe that they're gonna go somewhere else and not come back to you, I urge you to take a look at your stick factor for Botox because think about it. The only people you're seeing back for Botox are the people that are coming back for Botox. So the people that aren't coming back for Botox, they're out of your visual field. And that's why you don't really realize what you're losing. And the same thing happens for skincare. <clears throat> so you have to stay at it. It's not easy, but I think that when you realize that you are going to, it's like, it's like being kind to a person because you're taking care of them. Going into an office where you basically, a patient comes into you and says, you know, I'm really fine, but my daughter is having a lot of problem, cardiac um, issues, and I don't have a really good cardiologist. And you basically take the time to help her we weed through all of the people that she has probably been referred to and make that suggestion of who she should see. This is even more thorough in terms of what you're doing. It's more related to your business. But at the end of the day, if you step outside of your little shell of all that little maze of only the things that you think are important at that minute, and you realize that really sticking with a skincare regimen is going to improve your patient's outcome, you will benefit in so many ways. You will feel good. You will basically, um, the patient will improve, which is the most important thing. And you basically will now have another revenue stream. You will have another way to support your business. And why would you balk at that? So selling skincare is really becomes the easiest part of your job once you basically stick with it. Is this, um, the, I wanted to ask one last question um, of our listeners, which is if you thought that you could put one product on regimen, what do you think your hero product would be? What do you think you are most comfortable at this point selling? I have four other doctors in my practice and 
obviously it's something that comes very naturally to me because I've worked at it. I work with my other doctors all the time. I have a Mohs surgeon who's young and does a lot of cosmetics as well. But I basically am saying to her all the time, how can anyone, any skin cancer patient walk out that you've done a Mohs procedure on without antioxidant and sunscreen? I don't understand how that can happen. And so I think it's really important for you if you're running your practice to basically have that conversation. If you're not running your practice, be the person that makes the change. Okay, well, I think some people may have changed their vote after you just said that, but let's see. Here's the poll. There are your results. I don't think they changed their minds. I think that's true for all of us. You would be amazed at the difference in sunscreens and be at, in terms of if you educate your patient about mineral versus chemical, about nanoparticles, about how often they have to, to uh, reapply it. And basically now that we have other products that have become My Hero products, which is Aerophotona with sunscreen, an all mineral sunscreen with DNA repair, I can't tell you how it's become something so important in my office, a business all in, unto itself. So I always say if, if patients, I always ask my family members or close friends when they say I had my um, skin check and I say, did you take every single piece of your clothing off? You, I know you all know that most of them don't, but in my office, everyone takes everything embarrassingly off. And it's the same thing with skincare. If you're doing Botox or you're doing laser and you are not talking about skincare, you're basically not pulling their underpants down. You're not looking at their scalp. You're basically not doing your job. So it should be fun. And that's what I really want you to remember. All right. If you want to play our little outgoing music. A little music. bit I'll play for you, okay? Oh. <laughs> Anyways, while we are um, watching this, this would be a good time to start populating the Q&A with any questions for Dr. Tadaldi. This is a really unique opportunity to ask her questions. She's here ready to answer. She has a not only a phenomenal dermatology practice, but she really has you know, made this art form of recommending skincare for, for patients and her patients love her and she has a very sticky touch and she call it with great patient attention because of it. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off as much as I could listen to it. Haley's probably hysterically laughing right now because at our Christmas parties, I would always have her put that on the screen because it just makes me so happy. But I'd love to hear your questions. Okay, so here we are. So um, Dr. Marmer was watching. She says, thank you. Um, someone says, when are you coming to Canada? We'd love to come to Canada. And it's something that we've talked about. Uh, it's a little more difficult to ship out of the country, but um, it's something that we definitely have, are talking about. Okay, how about um, if, this is a good question, um, if a patient doesn't want every three month subscription, will they get an automated reminder email to buy again? They absolutely do get that. And so, um, oh, I'm sorry. The question was, will they get, if they don't want the subscription, that's a very good question. Um, they get a reminder if they're on subscription and they can basically curate whether they need it, they can advance it, they can say delay it, they can say I don't need it, they can say I need two, they can have it sent to their summer home, they can have it sent to their a, a different address. But we don't have yet a reminder about the patients that only purchased once and that's a great um, uh, question and I think it's something we will have very quickly. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Tina says, can you show pictures of your skincare store in the office? I don't know if you have photos, maybe you could at least tell us about well, it. Well, if you go back to that first slide, let's do that really quickly. That's the shelving in my skincare store. And so that basically is, it's, it is a touch and feel place. Uh, we do have someone who mans it. And so it's not like people are walking in and touching everything. But right now, obviously that's not what's happening. Okay, follow-up question to that. Could you do a mock-up quick conversation of what you say to the patient and how you address typical objections? 
Absolutely, and I want to pull this up right now and, and so that you can see it. So after, this is a card that we get, uh, and again, I'm going to give Haley the kudos for this because um, this card, and I know people have things that are a lot more modern than this, but I can't tell you, we laminate it. We buy a $50 little laminator at, at Staples. We laminate it after we figure it, after we uh, write it, uh, things down, and that is something that I delegate to someone in my office. I don't do that. Um, it is also on regimen in the order that you, uh, you can put it on regimen in the order that you want it. But I can't tell you how many of my patients come back with these cards. They're laminated so they can go into the bathroom drawer and the patient has to really get used to the routine. All of us, even doctors who go to other appointments, if they don't have things written down, they are going to forget what to do. I've gone to, you know, to have my colonoscopy and I get the instructions and if it's not written down, forget it. I don't remember what to do. So this is really important. Um, I also can, I will tell you a little bit about the conversation. So the patient walks in, I already told you, what do you do for skincare? That's usually what I say, are you using skincare? Or I get funny right from the beginning and I say, well, I can tell you're not using any product. And I only say that if I feel the patient is confident um, or if a patient this summer, I walk in and the patient's tan, I have a new routine where I just close the door and leave. And they really do get scared that I'm not coming back into the room. But I walk back in and I say, we need a lot of education here. And so I started out, my, my conversation is usually after they tell me what they're doing, if I'm pretty pleased with what they're doing, I'll say, well, you know, I think you're on a great routine, but I think I, I don't see a lot of stimulation. I see protection, you're using sunscreen, you're keeping your face clean, and that does remove some of the um, pollutants and things on your skin that can cause oxidative stress, but I don't see a really powerful antioxidant, so I tell them a little bit about that, and I don't see something that's going to stimulate collagen and stimulate cell turnover, so let's talk a little bit about retinols, and that's all. I won't probably do much more than that. As you can see on this card, I have a retinol called BioComplete for the evening, and then I have melatonic, and um, you know, melatonic is something that I've become really uh, impressed with, and I actually use it as an enhancer. It, it has, it does, there is some evidence that it does compete for retinol receptors, and it does have a retinol effect, but it's a luxury product. It feels good, it smells good, and it's in a little serum bottle, and patients love little serum bottles. You know, you can poo-poo them as much as you want. I like little serum bottles, so that's what I'm telling you about your experience and what you like. I like things that feel good as well. Um, when I'm gonna talk to them, then they come back the next time and I'll say, okay, you had a retinol and antioxidant and sunscreen. Are you ready for some serious skincare now? And that's when I'll start to talk about growth factors. And I'll actually tell them that, did you know that growth factors won the Nobel Prize in medicine in the 50s? Nobody knows that. And then I say, there's a reason for that. There's a reason that that lock and key for the growth factor in the cell is something that we now have taken into real pro-grade skincare because it's all about finding that specific fit to our fibroblast, that's our cell that makes collagen, that makes a difference. They're getting education, they're also getting touch and feel, but most importantly, they're getting the fact that I care. Does that help a little bit? Yes, yeah, she says, great info. Um, last piece of this question. So you give them two to three products on a first visit, not five to six? Yes, unless they all are prepared for five to six. And Haley actually taught me this. Don't count your patient's money in his or her wallet. And don't, real, and don't think that you know what they're going to do. I say a line like, I can start you out at a very, very simple routine, and then you can see if you feel that it's going to be comfortable and that you're improving. And that usually does include a retinol, sunscreen, and an antioxidant, because I know when they come back, they're gonna already see improvement. Um, but then there are patients that say, no, I wanna do what you're doing right away, and they really want the whole outfit, and they want, you know, the. The shirt, the pants, yeah. the shoes, the, the bag, thing. the whole thing. And so I, I say, and I, and I ask them, I, I, I basically get really open and honest, like this is about what it's gonna cost if you do what I do. And you can start out slowly and make sure you feel that you're really test driving it and you see some difference. I promise you, if you're putting your sunscreen on four times a day, which I'm gonna make you do, you're gonna see some difference. 
Okay, and just so you guys know, while Dr. Tadaldi has this card up on the screen, very soon Regimen's actually going to have the ability to print it in the office as a download right inside of Regimen Pro. So that'll make it easier for you. So, all right, lots more questions coming in. Um, let's see. Is there a way to get people away from Derm Store? <laughs> <laughs> I have to laugh. Yes, you have to tell them that. Basically, when they go into Derm Store, it's like walking into quicksand. And every one of us who has done any kind of online shopping has fallen into quicksand. And the reason you tell them to do it on regimen is because you want to control how they're spending their money at first, but then they, if they really want to go into the quicksand because they love to shop, they can go to your page. Remember that Regimen Pro has your page. Your doctor can't shop, your patient can't shop on my page, just on your page. And you can put all your favorite products. And if they really want to um, go walk and take a walk in the quicksand, they can buy the eye cream you like. They can buy the growth factor that you like. They can buy this scrub that you like. They can buy everything that is something that you have controlled for them. And so the line that I love to say is, I'm trying to prevent you from walking into, I won't, I can't say Neiman Marcus anymore. I'll say Bergdorf Goodman and going into where the, um, to the, that there's a reason why skin is in and product is right there when you walk in, because I remember the slide with the $8 billion. Well, that's why it's there. And I tell them you can go right either to lipstick or upstairs to close. Forget about it. You have the best from me. Got it. Okay. What is the spiel you give to patients that convinces them to buy the TNS Advanced Serum? Well, it's not even a spiel, but I, Patty's on this call. I wish Patty could, uh, you could unmute Patty because I, Patty and I have been arguing about growth factors as long as we've known each other. And this morning I said to her, I swear to God, my skin is so much better. So what I say, at first I give them a bit about the, um, the Nobel Prize and that growth factors truly are turning on fibroblasts. They're specific to the one, the, the TNS is specific to fibroblasts. Plant, I can't say the same thing for plant growth factors, even though I tried them for a while, I can't the same, say the same thing for, um, a lot of the other peptides that are basically signalers or even stem cells, but there is, uh, there's, some, there's some pretty good uh, science with stem cells. But I basically say that in what they've done is they've curated this growth factor now. So they've grown it under different conditions so that it has a myriad of different growth factors specific to stimulation of the fibroblast. And just like I say that retinol caused an increase in collagen and elastin, and I do have that slide under a glass in my office that was from the JAD article in the 80s where we actually took the biopsies um, of skin and showed a thicker epidermis and more collagen staining and more elastin staining. The same thing has been shown with um, the new TNS growth factor. And then I say the other chamber is basically filled with botanicals and antioxidants that we know are important. So the bottom line is at, in the beginning, and I will tell you that for the last 10 years, I used my growth factor once a day. In the last month, I've started using it now twice a day because I saw such change. And their science really does show that, that after two weeks, fine lines are changing a bit. And so your patients will just fall in love with it. Okay, hope that answered the questions. So uh, Dr. Kilmer says, hi Ruth, miss you. Tell I me about you. signing up for Regimen MD, please, Susie. Well, I miss you too. I miss you terribly. Um, and I would love to talk to you about it. So we will, and I will sick Haley on you and you will think you've died and gone to heaven. That's the truth. <laughs> All right, here's another question from Lisa. She says, will you be showcasing products monthly? We'd love to, and that is on our agenda. We have so, the problem with, with Patty and with, um, my, and with me, um, I think Jim Jernigan, our, COO is also, our CEO is also on this call, and he's just a master, he's a master. So he ran all of the continuity for Guthy Ranker, Asia Pacific, he knows what he's doing. But Patty and I are the two docs on, on, in the company. And the problem is we have day jobs. 
we'd like to not have our day jobs for a while so that we could go to all these offices and really give you our secret sauce. Um, I think that uh, the person who said, when are you coming to Canada? I'd love to come to Canada. Invite me, invite the two of us. We'll come and give you a real Rockettes show about skincare. Okay, here's a good one. Um, can you share tips or talking points for getting patients to sign up and adding the payment for auto ship in the office that day? Yes. And COVID has helped me a lot with that because I know that a lot of you say, oh, patients don't want to give their credit cards. But now with COVID, we're taking all of their information on the phone before they come in for their visit. And so the line that I give is Dr. Tadaldi is definitely going to want to address your skincare situation. And so I'm going to put this information into our system. It's safe and sound under lock and key. You don't have to buy anything. She will talk to you about what she suggests. If you're already in the system, you will get the products a lot more quickly. And they love that. No one has complained about that. And they're thrilled to um, basically know that the information is already there and they don't have to give anything. I, I did that intentionally. I just wanted everyone to be able to see you now for the rest of this. I'm kind um, of flushed right now after talking so long. I'm not usually this thing. I need my niacinamide. My Metacel really will help me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, few more really good questions. So um, this is from an Alex with the coolest spelling of your name ever, Alex. Um, if we want to learn more information about a particular brand or a product that's available through Regimen, is it best to reach out to the brand or do you have a support system to help with that? Well, we have both really. Um, we, we, we urge you to, we like to work with the manufacturers and the manufacturers, once you are on Regimen, we have a communication system that we can send their teaching uh, people to you to really educate you on the brand. But we also know that there is a certain amount of sell in the manufacturer sales team that we are not necessarily we don't want you to be turned off by it. And so we're happy to, um, our, our, we have the head of our whole training system is Haley Jacobson and she's spe specifically wonderful at this. So I have been to so many meetings where I've texted her in the middle of the meeting and said, which is the sunscreen that has the most niacinamide? Which is the sunscreen that's all mineral? Which is the sunscreen that has no oxybenzone? I mean, she knows a lot. <laughs> Okay, great. So this one's from Dr. Isaac. Hi, Dr. Isaac. Um, how do you handle it when a patient comes in with a product from Sephora and they ask you to advise them how to use it? It drives me nuts. I tell them to use it on their tuchus. That's your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I say truthfully, I say to people, go ahead, you know, you can use this somewhere else for a while but I'm gonna give you something that's really gonna make a difference. You don't have to throw it out if it feels good or smells good but then I'll tell them to use it last over anything I'm giving them where it's not gonna have as much of an effect. But that's really an important issue too. That bag of products for that first visit, as much as you wanna go, oh no, this is a patient that has diabetes, congestive heart failure, hypertension, I'm gonna be in this room forever. That bag of products is really important to glue you to that patient to review. I don't like this sunscreen. It has something called oxybenzone in it. I don't want you to use this. I'd rather you use an all mineral sunscreen. And then you basically weed through them. Half my patients want to just throw them out right there. Some of my patients want to take them home or give them to someone. That would have been my mother. Um, and I would tell you that it really becomes a conversation, you're only going to do it once. And I will tell you that it also, it, it solidifies the fact that you are a product junkie. Got it. Okay. So we, we do have more questions and I want you all to stay on, but if some of you had to go at this one hour mark, I just want to let you know, we are recording this and we're going to email this out to you this weekend. So if you do have to leave, don't worry. Um, but we do have a couple more questions we're going to get to. And if Dr. Tadaldi is okay with it, we'll keep going. Sure. Okay, so um, here's an, um, I think I might have rosacea. I've never been this flushed. Okay, I've never had rosacea. Okay. So this is from Atina Roland. Um, what do you do when you walk out of the room and at the front desk they say, I'll just take one of the three, assuming that's where they pick up the products? That's the whole point. You don't want them to take, if, 
one of the three, you want them to do everything. And so one of the things I say to my patient is, with regimen, it's quite easy. If they're going into my store, that could definitely happen. And so if they're going to go into the store and say, I'll just take one, I embrace that. I say, that's great. I say, let's start with one. Let's start with one. And I never tell anybody in my office to encourage them to do the full agenda if they don't want to. I want them, I want to develop trust. It's like, you know, they've had Botox before and they had a real, you know, um, depression of their medial brow and they're scared to death to have it again. I don't, I want them to come back and I want them to trust the fact that I um, can do it the way that they're going to be happy. And so I feel the same with skincare products, but on regimen, that option is not um, as available to them because they're in the room with me. And this is where the intimidation factor can be a little bit useful because I'm going to say right then and there, if they say they don't want to, I'll say fine. But I'll say this is why I'm giving you discoloration defense because you have a lot of mottled hyperpigmentation. So if you don't take this and you don't have a lot of brown spots on your face, the retinol is going to help. But the addition of a product that really interferes with pigmentation in a different way is going to make it even faster. Most of the time when I give them that little bit of extra education, they'll say, fine, I'll take it. Makes sense. Okay, so this one says, what royalty do the MD participants get? So you will get 35% um, of the first sale and 25% of each successive sale. And so the reason that is the way it is, is because if most of you think you're getting 50% of the, of, the, of the product sale price, because that's what you have to pay for it, I can promise you once you add in real estate and you add in the people that are working for you and you add in inventory control, which is a nightmare, um, and returns, we take everything back. Um, we have an amazing customer service person but once you add up all those factors, uh, we figured it out. It's about it's about thirty seven to thirty eight percent, and so that thirty five percent is very close to that. And then when you figure from that slide that I showed you with one hundred thirty two eleven, you're probably going to get one point two turns, and we're going to probably, if you truly do what I'm telling you to do, you, you I get more than fifty percent. Um, you will definitely um, make up for that over the after the first year in terms of how many more products you're going to be selling um, uh, because of the continuity part of the equation. All right, um, here's a good one. Um, so I guess a follow up to that. If you sign them up on the website with a credit card, are you doing that in the patient room? Well, before COVID, I was doing it in the patient room or I would leave the room and have my medical assistant do it. Now with COVID, I have a little bit more time. So I have done it myself. I'll, I have done it a lot myself and um, my sales have skyrocketed. There's something about the doctor doing it that gives them comfort, that is that whole trust factor again, which I think in, enters into every relationship you have. And um, it's not just your loved ones. It's not just your, um, the people that you work with, your colleagues, it's also the people you're taking care of. And so I think once they see that you are basically, it's like calling them back after their first Fraxel, once they really understand that you truly care and you're educating them, I think that taking the credit card information is something you can do. Most of us don't have the time to do it. And I certainly didn't have the time to do it before COVID. But I also have now told, one of the slides is you have to be in control of your office. I have now made it an absolute must that when they're booking appointments, that information goes in from the front desk. Okay, well, no one asked this, but I have a feeling they might be thinking, do you, you really think that's a good use of your time to take the extra time, you as the MD, to sign them up? Not necessarily, but I'm now seeing fewer patients, and so... I'm probably going to go into my cubby and go online and buy something I don't need, or I'm going to probably annoy my son and call him again for the third time uh, when I talked to him last three days ago. So the bottom line is, no, I think that when you, when you don't have the time, which is what most of us don't have, the best thing to do, which is why I'm trying to have my office do it now, is to take all the information when they're booking the appointment. 
and your patient will, your, your staff will squawk, they will say, I can't do that. I, no, that's what they're gonna do. If they're gonna book three appointments in the hour, all three appointments are gonna have all the information there. And the, and the key to saying to the patient is, yes, she's gonna take care of you with those injections and she's gonna talk to you about laser and she's gonna talk to you about what, what treatments she wants to do over the year. But I can promise you, if you're not using skincare according to what she wants you to do, she's not gonna see you again. And so I'm going to take this information. You don't have to get anything, but that, that way that information is there. And when you get, click into regimen, and so the part of that, that video that I didn't show shows how the patient's sitting in the room, I'm in all my oppressive gear where I can't even breathe. And I basically click out of my EMR, I click up, I bring up my um, regimen, site and I basically uh, go into my patient list. I click on the patient, it's already there because my staff has registered the patient and I just start adding products. It takes no time at all. Okay. Um, and my medical assistant is trained to do that now too. So my medical assistant will do it for me. A lot of you, you know, have scribes. The scribe can do it very quickly and you can delegate to them as well. So it's very doable. Okay, um, let's see, Dr. Marmer says, will we really not see them again if they, will you really not see them again if they don't follow your advice? Um, no, I've never not seen them again. Of course I'll see them again. <laughs> <laughs> but I have walked out of the door of the room for a few minutes at least. <laughs> All right, and speaking of Dr. Marmer, um, on our regimen website, we do have MM Skincare, and when we were talking about only recommending a few products at once, MM Skincare among, uh, and other lines do have kind of all-in-one products, like protection, stimulation, and moisturizer in one serum, so it could be a better. They do, and we also are going to ask Ellen Marmer to give a little video educational um, webinar on her products because they are definitely underexposed. All right, Dr. Marmer, you've been called out live. <laughs> um, so here's another one. In the future, will you be able to offer the same discount that the manufacturers offer on their site? We are working on that. And the way it stands right now is if a, manu if, if a discount is offered on a reliable site, we and the patient has bought the product and they see it then up, we will honor that discount now. Beautiful. And then one more suggestion would be to get a copy of the invite to Regimen Pro email that they could send from their practice email to might make it look more practice personal and maybe avoid the spam box. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Right. So, all right. Well, I think that uh, we have answered all of the questions for today. So unless, uh, oh, okay. One more came in. Once you get their email, do you email them to buy more? No, we okay. do not. We do not. That's all about the doctor patient relationship. And so we're not trying to, to, to extend the conversation. We're trying to sustain the conversation. Yes. So if anyone else has any additional questions, um, Dr. Jadali talked a lot about Haley. She's amazing. And if you, um, you know, reach out to Regimen, she could have a one-on-one -on -one with you and go over the program. Same with any member of our team to help, you know, explain it and show you guys how easy it is. Otherwise, um, I learned a lot. I hope everyone else did. I hope this was useful. Um, we did record it, so we will be sending it out this weekend. And you will be getting a poll when you close out of Zoom. We'd love any feedback you might have, since this is a new educational skincare series for us. Otherwise, Dr. Tadaldi, any? A lot of people are saying thank you and love and great thank job. Thank you and love back. And the truth of the matter is, I can't, I can't express enough how much it will change your life to basically take control of this part of your domain. Yeah. Okay, and a very last ending. Um, and for anyone that's been kind of thinking about getting on with Regimen Pro, anyone that's listening to this webinar series, we wanna offer you guys um, a no cost setup and zero monthly fees. So normally there's a thousand dollar setup fee and $50 a month to be on the platform, but just mention the webinar and you can avoid all of those. So I'm, um, I'm really thankful for everyone that tuned in. Thank you, Dr. Isaac. Please reach out to us. And thank you, Dr. Tadaldi, so much for sharing all of your secret sauce for how you've done, has created such an amazing practice. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye.